So we built a plywood target and a self-healing foam target. We're going to fire a bunch of rounds through them, see how much damage they take, and give you the best option if you want to build your own budget precision rifle sight and target. We brought three rifles with us today. Uh, we got a 6.5 Creedmoor, we got a 300 PRC, and a 338 Lapua. So we're trying to see how much damage these rounds will do to the plywood and to the self-healing foam. And we're going to compare that to see how much damage they might be able to withstand over a long period of time. The OSB is the cheapest piece of wood that I could find at Home Depot to make a target with. Uh, it was about, I think, eight bucks. And the uh, self-healing foam is about $60. It's actually designed to be able to, to take a round, it'll pass right through it, and then it closes the hole. If you shoot a bunch of holes through your plywood, you're going to have to rebuild your target probably a number of times. Uh, versus a piece of self-healing foam, uh, you might not have to rebuild that one until uh, thousands of rounds go through it. The benefits of the self-healing foam, uh, one of them is that it's, it's pretty waterproof. So you can actually leave these targets out here all day. The foam is not like a sponge, it's not going to soak up a bunch of water and get all waterlogged and wet. Additionally, they should be rated for thousands of rounds to go through these. So I'm not sure what caliber they'll be able to withstand. So we're going to test that out today. But now that we've got our target stand set up and our target stable to it, it's time to get shooting. The first rifle that we're going to be shooting here, we have a Remington 700. Dropped it in an Oryx chassis. We've got the uh, MDT brake. And then we have the, the Vortex Venom scope on top. So uh, we've got 20 rounds of 6.5 Creedmoor shooting at our plywood target. So that's uh, 20 rounds we just ran through the 6.5 and we're going to go check out the damage on the back of the target here. So looking at the back of the target here, the plywood, um, no surprises, right? The 6.5 Creedmoor goes right through it and just smashes a, a big hole through the plywood as it goes through. It's pretty evident, everyone kind of knew what was going to happen. But next we're going to shoot the self-healing foam and we're going to see how much damage the 6.5 Creedmoor does when it goes through that. Uh, looking at the front of the target here, you can definitely see where the rounds went through and then the foam kind of closed back up uh, around as the bullet passes through. But we'll take a look at the back and see what happened. Those holes are definitely smaller than uh, the diameter of the bullet. Uh, I, you can see there's a little bit of a hole here, but as the bullet passes through, it uh, just closed right back around it, does its job, and looks like you can keep firing away. Comparing the two of these, there's definitely more damage to the plywood than there is uh, to the foam. So I'd say uh, if you're using a caliber up to a 6.5 Creedmoor, uh, self-healing foam would definitely last a, a way longer time and uh, might be a better buy. But uh, the next test is, is the 300 PRC. So we're gonna see how much damage those do. So this is the 6.5 Creedmoor rounds that we originally fired at both of the targets. And then this is a 300 PRC. So it's quite a bit bigger. It's going to have a, a lot more energy getting delivered to the target. So we're going to see how much damage it does to, to both of them to be able to compare. So we got uh, 20 more rounds, 300 PRC. We're gonna run it through the rifle at the uh, self-healing foam. A 
looks like the self-healing foam did its job. The round passed right through and the foam just closed the hole right around that uh, 300 PRC. And coming around to the backside, looks like uh, the foam's still standing up. No surprises. We kind of mangled the back of the plywood, as you would expect shooting a, a thin sheet like this. So we have a winner here for 300 PRC. It's going to be the uh, self-healing foam. Uh, we're going to move on to the next test, which is going to be the 338 Lapua Magnum. All right, this is the Savage 110 in 338 Lapua Magnum. We're going to be putting five rounds into the plywood target. We're going to see how much damage that does. And then we're going to put another five rounds into the foam. We've got five more rounds of 338 Lapua. We're going to hammer the uh, foam target and see what happens. All right, so looking at the front of it, you know, you see where the round passed through, but um, yeah, the, the foam looked like it did its job on the entrance side, but oh, once again, exit hole with the uh, self-healing foam is uh, pretty negligible. It's almost the same size, I would say, as the 6.5 Creedmoor. So, so yeah, no surprise here. Uh, 338 round just went clean through and took out anything that was in its way on the plywood target. So big old holes in this one. Looking at that, between the two of them, I'd say the self-healing foam is the winner. I was expecting the, the foam to be absolutely just destroyed by the 338. But uh, even, yeah, 300, 338, both of them, no issues for this stuff. So yeah, we ran a, a decent amount of ammo through both the OSB plywood and the uh, self-healing foam. No surprises, the plywood just got holes, like decent sized holes blown right through it. But I was actually really surprised at the, the foam target and the way it withstood even the 338 rounds. At 60 bucks for the, the piece of foam, it's a higher upfront cost, but I think in the long run, you're gonna be end up saving your money, especially if you're gonna be using these things for quite a bit or if you're sharing them with your friends and stuff like that. So uh, winner, winner, chicken dinner.